Welcome to KGSM TV. I'm Harry Loomis. And I'm Reese Payne. In this show, we have our usual coverage of top stories, our history segment over Black History Month, and later, Harry and Kanan bring you the Griffin Sports Update. But first, at the beginning of the spring semester, many on-campus students were met with a surprising turn of events. For many, Christmas Eve is an exciting time, but for some, it was a time of very stressful news. At about 2.30 in the morning, I got a call um, that one of the pipes in Vardabedian had ruptured. Uh, it was specifically a, a sprinkler pipe um, had uh, frozen and, and water was leaking out. The leak began on the third floor in the lobby area and worked its way down all three floors. So immediately it was res life, it was physical plant, it was uh, custodial. Um, in on Christmas Eve at 2.30 in the morning, um, getting students moved, identifying who was in the building, getting students moved to a new safe, uh, not, not necessarily safe, but not wet building. Um, and also it was getting the, the areas that were impacted um, extracted. Of the students that decided to stay on campus, they were relocated to Vasilakos and Leverton Hall. I was supposed to come back on the 27th, but I got moved into this room, which was very last minute. Um, it's kind of, because initially I was told that it was going to be really, like, it wasn't going to be that big of a deal. Um, maybe a few days, so I just grab a few things and pop over. And that kind of went on for a few weeks where it was kind of like I didn't know what was going on and I didn't know if I should move more stuff or or what because um, it almost felt like living in a hotel. Relocating from Vardabedian to Leverton Hall was not the biggest obstacle that Wesley encountered. I am an ADA student. Um, I need certain accommodations. Um, and this isn't like the fault of the current um, like housing director or any, anyone like that that's currently working here because the bathroom is not ADA compliant to the extent past someone in a wheelchair. Luckily, both ResLife and the physical plant are working together to make this room more accessible. He's been very, very uh, helpful and kind of forthcoming with, with me and my stuff. Um, I get, I've seen him uh, walk around back and forth when Barty being in here. And when I was moving my stuff, I ran into him and he helped me move in and stuff like that. So he's been very, very helpful with stuff. Reporting for KGSM TV, I'm Zoe Jane. Thank you, Zoe. Here at KGSM TV, we want to highlight the life and legacy of Claudette Colvin. Claudette Colvin was the first black woman to be detained for her resistance against Jim Crow laws. In 1955, the 15-year-old young lady refused to give up her seat in the middle of the bus to a white woman. This occurred nine months before the Rosa Parks incident that became so well known. The teenage Colvin was one of four plaintiffs on the first federal court case filed by civil rights attorney Fred Gray on February 1, 1956, as Browder v. Gale to challenge bus segregation in the city. The judges determined that the law segregating bus transportation in Alabama was unconstitutional. For years, Colvin's efforts was not publicized by many civil rights leaders due to the fact that she was unmarried and pregnant when she took her stand. Many worried that the press would use her condition against the civil rights movement. The record of her arrest and adjudication of delinquency was finally expunged in 2021 when she was 82 years old. Stay tuned after the break for all things sports with Kanan and I. As fun as college is, it can be a really stressful time. It's easy to feel alone. Even in full classrooms, sometimes it still feels like you have no one. It's especially easy to feel isolated during these crazy times. It's hard to recognize the signs when you don't know them. Don't be afraid to reach out and get help. There are always ways to get help on campus. The counseling center is always ready to work with you. There's also lots of ways to get help off campus. There are several different hotlines you can reach out to. Make sure to check in on your friends and family. Keep an eye out for the signs. There's no shame in recognizing that you're struggling. There's no shame in asking for help. There is no shame in taking care of yourself. You and your mental health are the priority. 
See the signs. Take action. 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 I really encourage if you need to talk to someone, reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Hello, welcome to the eSports Arena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so you're just letting everyone in? Yeah. Looking for a place to hang out, game, or just relax? The Griffin eSports Arena is open to all students. Head on over today. Welcome to KGSM Sports. I'm Harry Loomis. And I'm Ken Ambielovats. With the final stretch of the season on the way, Griffin's women's basketball looks to continue their dazzling season right before the MIAA tournament. But the question was, could the Griffins contain Emporia State and stop Treasure Joe, the best scorer in the conference? Missouri Westerner taking on Emporia State. The Griffins looking for their 20th win of the year. Picking up mid-first quarter now. Mary Folds picks up the offensive rebound, finds Camille Evans by herself, dishes it for the easy two. Missouri Westerner up early, but Treasure Job and the Hornets weren't backing down. Job would finish the game with 26, but the spark for the first half would be Johnny Gonzalez. Seven points, including that huge three-pointer that shifted the tide from Missouri Western. Gonzalez attacking the paint. Shovel pass to Mary Folds. Easy layup. The bench is loving it. Now here we go. Treasure time. Brianna Budges to Connie Clark to Mary Fouts and one counted. The bucket is good. Looney is rocking and rolling. Brianna Budges decided it was her turn. She knocks down that three. She would finish the game with 24 points. Missouri Western goes on to defeat Emporia State 76 to 60, moving their record now to 20 wins, 5 losses of the year. down the stretch really come down to toughness and I think it really showed that we pulled through with some big boards and with changing defenses it can be hard to um, adjust your offense and I think people stepped up and I think we made some really good plays down the stretch. Coming into the game, well I'm glad Coach prepared us for the different type of defenses that we was coming into. Um, I, think, I think we did respond well. Um, we had some spots that we slipped up in but we, we did find ourselves fortunate to rec recruit really good players and ultimately that's what it comes down to I mean it's it's the people you surround yourself with if you can get to that 20 win mark every year and um, that's obviously a goal for coaches um, you know you want to win all of them but um, that's always kind of a line in the sand that you've had um, a good season or, or not um, and so really fortunate um, that we've you know had support and, and had great players Missouri Western defeated Northeastern State last night 68 to 58 with Brianna Budgets leading the way with 14. The Griffins now move to 21-5 on the year, second in the standings right behind Nebraska Kearney. The 2022-23 season has not been an easy one for Griffin men's basketball. Between injuries and tough stretches of play, the Griffins came into last Wednesday in 11th place in the MIAA having lost their last six games. They scored a huge win over Washburn and Will Eaton's return but how would they fare on Saturday against a third-ranked team in the conference? Some Saturday basketball at Looney. Griffins hosting Emporia State after a huge win over Washburn on Wednesday. Let's take you to the first half. Julius Dixon over to Wednesday's hero, Jerron Thames. He drives to the basket, throws it down with two hands. Griffins off to a good start in large part to Julius Dixon, who does the same thing as Thames, throws it down with the one hand. Later on in the first half, Will Eames finds Reese Glover. Off one leg, you know he's going to hit that. Griffins up one at halftime. They actually honored Gary Filbert, the first head coach in Missouri Western men's basketball history. Second half, Griffins got down to a slow start, down by eight, but Will Eames, what a finish down there. He's been so good since he got back. Griffins would force a tie late in the second half. Julius Dixon, why not? Let it go. 19 points for Julius Dixon. He would ring the bell. Another huge, huge win for the Griffins, getting back into postseason contention with a 65-60 to 60 win. We've come back from 23 or whatever it was against Northeastern, so no lead or no deficit is, like, too big for us. And when it's eight points, I mean, that's, that's really two possessions and you're back in the game. So To be able to get some of these young guys very impactful minutes and have them experience just a little bit of success, um, just winning a game is, is a big deal. Reporting for KGSM-TV. I'm Harry Loomis.
And the good times continued Thursday as the Griffins got their third straight win over Northeastern State, 54-41. After his big game Saturday, Julius Dixon once again led the way with 13 points. Both the men and women are at Rogers State on Saturday. Griffin softball has officially started. The Griffins took part in the Minnesota State Division II Classic and in four games posted a record of 1-3. On February 11th, Missouri Western will look to rebound while playing in the Alvey Early Memorial Classic taken on Southwest Baptist in Bentonville, Arkansas. Despite the university getting a snow day on Thursday, Griffin baseball started their season with a 10-6 win over Washington Baptist. Brendan Anderson was a star of the game going 3-4 for four with three RBIs. The team is back in action today against Powerhouse Southern Arkansas. After being ranked fourth in the MIAA preseason poll, Griffin Tennis looks to start their season off with a bang by taking on Quincy University on Friday, February 10th, and William Drew College on February 11th. Both bouts are at Genesis Health Club in St. Joseph, Missouri. This week is track and field's last event before the MIAA conference meet as the Griffins head to Pittsburgh State. They enter the meet fresh off a successful Bearcat Open that saw several top fives and Alyssa Mahone breaking her own school record in the weight throw. Stay tuned after the break as we discuss the Super Bowl. The Missouri Department of Conservation is located on Missouri Western's campus at 701 James McCarthy Drive. All you have to do is open the door and walk in. Once in, you will see all the sorts of animals, live animals, and rawr. Anyways, here's another snake. And a fish. So cute. Outside, you can see ponds, trees, and walking trails. There are even activities for kids. Stop by sometime between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Go Griffs! Back at KGSM TV, we have brought the roundtable back. It is Super Bowl Sunday. This weekend, we invited our good friend Reese Payne to come along with us. He is on the Griffin football team. We want to get his thoughts on the game. Reese, what's the big thing you're looking for this Sunday? Uh, really, I think it all comes down to the Chiefs defense. Uh, if the Chief, Chiefs defense executes and uh, shuts down Devontae Smith, I think they've really got a good shot. So uh, Mahomes is always, he's always getting after it. People are worried about his injury a little bit, but they've had two weeks to get him healthy. So I think the Chiefs' offense is going to execute either way, but it all comes down to the Chiefs and to see if they can shut down Devontae Smith. You know, I like that you brought up the injuries. Canal, we were talking uh, during the championship game. Mahomes and Travis Kelsey were both battling injuries. At the same time, the Eagles have kind of had an easy schedule to get to the Super Bowl. It's been two weeks. Both teams are pretty well rested. How do you think those uh, issues line up? Well, I think, first of all, uh, Mahomes and Kelsey, they're going to come out 90%, 90 to 100%. And if they come out to that extent, then the Eagles are in trouble the entire game. The Eagles are 16-3, and three, and they have one of the best defenses in the NFL, but they've never faced a defense like the uh, de uh, offense like the Chiefs. So far, like you said, the Chiefs-Eagles uh, have been having an easy ride to the play uh, playoffs uh, to the Super Bowl. Last two games, they only gave up seven points, but look at their teams. They faced the Giants, and then they faced the 49ers, who were down to their fourth string and had to run the ball. In my opinion, I don't think the Eagles are going to be able to contain Mahomes and crew. They're going to run away with it. Shouldn't be a problem. Mahomes was spectacular in that championship game against the Bengals. Mahomes and Hurts, we just found out on Thursday, finished first and second in MVP voting. Patrick Mahomes is your 2022 NFL MVP. Interesting enough, though, an, uh, MVP has not gone on to win the Super Bowl since 2000. Kurt Warner with the St. Louis Rams. Reese, that's a little bit of history going against the Chiefs. Do you think that plays a factor at all? You know, I really don't think it uh, has a factor in it. I don't think Mahomes is really going to get into those... Uh, those things, really. But uh, I think Mahomes is going to go win it and uh, bring back a Super Bowl MVP back to Kansas City as well. So that's, so that's your pick. You got Chiefs winning Mahomes, second home MVP. Do you he's, have a final score he's pick? Gonna, he's going to double it up. 35-21, uh, to 21, Chiefs. 35-21, Kanan. Who's your pick? Well, I have 24-21 for the Chiefs, but my Super Bowl MVP might surprise a lot of people. Isaiah Pacheco, the seventh-round pick. Mm -hmm. he, he's been a spectacular steal for the Chiefs. An amazing runner. Can also do it in the open field as well when it comes to receiving the ball. Watch out for Isaiah Pacheco. He's going to run rough shot over the Eagles. I think we're going to be in store for a fantastic game. I'm actually going to go away from you two. I'm going to pick the Philadelphia Eagles. 31-27 win to get the, their second Super Bowl in five years. MVP, he's won a Heisman Trophy. He's going to double it up. I'm going to take Devontae Smith. It's going to be your Super Bowl MVP. So, uh, boys, any big plans for the game? You know, I'm just excited for the, the halftime show. Watch Rihanna, I'm man. pretty excited for Rihanna. Yeah, that's going to be a fun halftime show. 
about all I got, though. It's going to be it's gonna be pretty good. So uh, we'll be looking out for all that. I hope you guys enjoy the game as much as I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, that's our show. We'll wrap up after this. Missouri Western is home to the Walter Cronkite Memorial. The memorial is home to eight of his Emmys, as well as exhibits showcasing caricatures, space exploration, his wife Betsy Maxwell Cronkite, timelines of his career, and a replica of his CBS newsrooms that visitors can interact with. We invite all of you to explore the Cronkite Memorial. Self-guided tours are available Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Coming up on Friday, February 17th, We'll be covering a history highlight on Annie Lee Cooper and a profile over Professor Petronia Sylvester and more top stories. And Kanan and I will preview a big Saturday night basketball against rival Northwest Missouri. Be sure to stay up to date with all things KGSM TV by following us on Facebook and YouTube. We'll see you again on Friday.